Welcome everybody to Friday's MUTV group chat. We're going to look ahead to a really big weekend to Ma for Manchester United with, of course, a European semi-final right here in Cologne. The Reds facing Sevilla. The boys are, are sort of spread far and wide again. Ben is here in Cologne. Maisie's on his travels. Danny's in a car. <laughs> Wes is here as well. What, what's going on, Ben? You're down at the cathedral, aren't you? Down at the cathedral square, yeah. <laughs> it's... Uh... Oh, he's stirring. He's stirring. On, what, what have you got? You've got, you've got company. Oh, uh, Paddy with you. <laughs> might, be having, might be having a conversation here. <laughs> Come on, let you show Hello, us. Man. Let's have a look. Let's Come see it. Then. <laughs> Let's see this. Uh, it'll be up in a minute. <laughs> okay. All right. In the meantime, whilst we're waiting for Ben to reveal what's going on, Maisie, where are you? Uh, I'm in Belfast, mate. I'm. Um... I'm playing golf today in a, in a society for mental health, raising awareness for mental health. So I'm over with Keith Gillespie. Well, oh. Keith's already here, obviously, but right. um, we played together last uh, yesterday and uh, the full competition is today. So looking forward to that. Did you have a good night with Keith? Uh, I, I actually left him because um, he got into a little bit of a, a mess. Okay. Yeah. Danny, where are you, mate? I'm on the M62. I'm, I'm on the way to, um, well, I've got a few meetings down, Leeds, Hull, that kind of way. So, yeah, that's, right, okay. that's me. For that. You all right, Wes? Yeah, I'm just at home, mate, yeah. Good. Just got up. What's, what's going on then? But what's, you haven't seen, we haven't seen anybody, Ben. You've got to show us that, what's going on there, Ben. Come on. He's just sat, he's just sort of like sat upright, like Frankenstein for the moment. He's just Let's have a look. Examining. Examining what to do next. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, before we move on, uh, just a bit of reaction from our show, uh, our last show, some emails and on social media. This one, hi guys, this is Samson. Enjoying the show, Ben, Maisie, Danny West, you're all fantastic. Special love to Wes from Kerala Blasters fans. Like to hear a few words from Wes about his time in India, about Indian players. Love you guys. Come on then, Wes. Loved it, mate. Loved it, Stu. I've, I've said this many a times. It fantastic experience. Um, I'd love to go back one day. It's a shame it's so short the season, but yeah. you know, me and Paul really loved it. Yeah. The fans were fantastic. Yeah. And Samson says, "Hope to see guys like Berber and G Sun Park in the group chat." Samson, where were you? We've had Berber in the group chat, but we would love to get G on. So thanks for that. This one, uh, picture, <laughs> this picture for Maisie, is this Maisie's private plane? You can see it's a picture for basically of a biplane <laughs> with the sort of registration G Maisie. Is that your private plane, Maisie, that? that? It's, just, it's just one of them. That's what I do loop de loops on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what Anthony says. In recent times, English teams, Liverpool, United, Wolves, have met Sevilla and lost because they failed to recognise they come out stronger in the second half and prepare ourselves for that. This time, Manchester United must prepare for that. It's a fair point. I mean, Sevilla uh, have a great record against the English teams, beat us a couple of years ago, and we're going to talk about that a bit later on in this show. Peter is saying, we haven't been playing well for a while now. That's why I think we'll unfortunately get beaten by Sevilla. We're missing Luke Shaw, says Peter. Chin up, Peter. Come on, we're in good form. Uh, Scott says, there are some right dodgy webcams here. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. I think the dodgy webcams you're thinking of are slightly different to the dodgy webcams that we've got on this programme. And Zenden says, can you please say the word Zenden? I'd be really pleased. Zenden Highland. Can you please say the word Zenden? I'd be really pleased. Boys after three, can you say the word Zenden? One, two, three. Zenden. 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 Yeah, you can't, you can't say fairer than that. Right, let's, br let's bring in our guest, very familiar face, very familiar voice for all Manchester United fans. Andy Mitten, who's out here in, in Germany working. Good to see you, mate. How are you? Okay, thanks. I've enjoyed it this week. It's been very, very hot, but it was good to see United go through against a, a Copenhagen team who were pretty much as, a, as I thought they would be. I, I spoke to their manager last Friday, Solbakken, a really interesting guy, and he pointed out that his team don't concede a lot of goals. It had been 32 matches since it conceded more than one. So I sensed it would be difficult for United to overcome them, but they did. Cologne's been... Decent. There's been United fans out here. Maybe 20 United fans have travelled over and I've seen them all. And um, 
just really sad that they can't go into the into the game because this would be perfect as a European away trip uh, if people could come here. But of course, if it was normal, then we wouldn't be here anyway because we'd just be playing home and away in, in, in the Europa League. So, yeah, I, I like Germany. I like German football. I like the stadiums. And I'm looking forward to seeing United in a, a European semi-final against a, a very good Sevilla team. Now you've been all over Andrew. the place, haven't you? I think you're in. Sorry, sorry, uh, Ben. You're in Dusseldorf. You were. At, you were. You've also been to Lucas Podolski's kebab shop here in in Cologne. What have I mean, You've been all over the place, haven't you? Yeah, I've been to Bonn as well. I've got a strange one with um, Podolski. Three years ago, Cologne played their first European game for twenty years at Arsenal, and they took twenty thousand fans. They only had two thousand tickets, and the reaction from the English media was pretty negative towards them, but. I was stood in the middle of them and they were just having a party. They weren't hooligans. And I wrote that. I wrote a piece for GQ and Podolsky retweeted it. And then he messaged me saying, thanks for sticking up for my club. Podolsky is Cologne's most popular man. He's like a, he's a hero in Cologne. And then I ended up meeting him in the World Cup in Russia. And then I went to see him in Japan in November. He's a great talker. He's a proper street smart, street footballer, belting footballer. And he said, come to Cologne. I'll introduce you to all the ultras there and uh, come to my kebab shop. And I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> never thinking that I would. And then uh, I met him the other day and, he's, you know, we had a kebab together. <laughs> yeah, that's mental. Yeah, go on, Ben. Morning, mate. I was just going to ask you, where will United need to be most concentrated? Where is, what are Sevilla's strengths? Sevilla's strengths are they are used to winning this competition. They play very well as a unit. They've got a very good manager. And there were doubts about the manager at the start of the season. And, and again in January when they were defeated by a second division team. But like United, they're unbeaten. And very, the similarities, they don't concede a lot of goals. I think United have conceded seven in the Europa League. Sevilla have only conceded eight. Sevilla are unbeaten since February. They didn't beat Barcelona or Madrid this year. They usually beat them at home. They've got Jesus Navas, who we know about. He was at Manchester City. He's a captain. He's playing right back. They've got probably the best sporting director in football, Monchi. He's the guy who brought um, Danny Alves to Europe. Uh, he brought even Rakitic in. And they sell these players on for a, a big profit. And Sevilla are a big club, but they're not even the best supported team in Sevilla. Real Betis have higher average crowds. They 45,000 Sevilla's average crowds, 36. And I got a load of messages from Betis fans yesterday because I'd wrote about them a few years ago saying, is there anything we can do to help you stop them winning another team? And I'm like, well, not really, mate, because I'm in an hotel room in Dusseldorf and I don't pick the team or come close to picking the team. And I said, what, what do you fear about your great rivals? And they said, they, they just win. They've just got this winning mentality um, that we really envy because they're so consistent. They've been in the top 10 in La Liga every year since 2002, but they're finishing third, fourth and fifth. They can't compete with Barcelona or Madrid or even Atletico Madrid, but they got 70 points this year, the same as Atletico. Um, and Lopetegui, I mean, he was doing brilliantly as Spain manager. And he took him to the World Cup. And then it leaked that he was going to Real Madrid. And it became a bit of a mess for him. He only lasted 10 weeks at Real Madrid. And I felt that when he said the other day, Manchester United are the biggest club in the world. OK, you can definitely argue that. And I'm not going to go against that. But I felt it was him also saying, yeah, stick that Real Madrid. <laughs> because <laughs> they, did, they didn't treat him well. But I still fancy United. That's part, partly in my heart and partly in my head. But... I was in Sevilla when United played there in 2018. It's one of the most frustrating ties I've ever seen. The day before the game, um, I wasn't filled with confidence by Jose Mourinho's words because I knew Sevilla were good, but they weren't the best team in the world. And United were very defensive that day. David De Gea was man of the match. And I remember looking at Romelu Lukaku, completely isolated, like often 20 or 30 metres from his closest player. And while it somehow stayed at nil-nil, thanks to De Gea, the scoreboard had a, a counter showing chances for, for each club. And it finished something like Sevilla 22, Manchester United 2. I'd never seen that before. Then we came back to Old Trafford. 
And I spoke to Sevilla fans on to Matt Busby Way. They didn't expect to win. They're like, this is Man United. We've just come to see Old Trafford. And then in the first half, I remember walking down the, through the main stand because they had to do something pitch side. And there was this hushed silence among the fans. Never seen it before. It was like, we're being taken apart here. We don't even know half the players and we're being taken apart. And then they got the two late goals through Ben Yedda. And United started to play 170 <clears> minutes into a 180-minute tie. And it was too late. And that was the first time, that was when Jose Stock really started to slip among fans. He lost 20% of support having gone out of Europe um, to Sevilla. So I hope that's a lesson learned for everyone. They are really good. De Gea knows how good they are. Mata knows how good they are. I think United are better now than they were in 2018. But look, it's a semi-final. Celta were good in 2017. Another Spanish team. Sevilla are even better. They're good in this competition. But I still think United are going to win. Yeah. Boys, who's their biggest threat, who's... Andy? Sorry. Go ahead. Who's, their no, biggest, go ahead, who's the biggest threat, Andy? This season, it's a lad, mm. an Argentinian called Lucas Ocampos. And he's the top okay. scorer. He scored 17 or 18. And he'd been on loan around Europe. He started off at River Plate, did well. He'd been at Milan, he'd been at Genoa, he'd been at Marseille. And when Sevilla signed him this year, for a fi- they gave him a five-year contract. People were like, whoa. But they did the same thing when they signed Freddie Canute. They, they yeah. signed players who are considered finished or past it, but they're not. I mean, yeah. they, they took Nolito back from, from City. And Navas, I think, you know, Navas is 34, 35. He's a, he's a top player. And they've got a brilliant sporting manager. They've got a very good manager. Look, they've got to the semi-finals of a competition. They've won more times than anyone. But they won it in 2006 for the first time. They beat, they beat Middlesbrough. And before that, Sevilla had not won a trophy since 1948. This is not a team historically who win trophies. But more recently, and you know, they beat Liverpool in the semi-final a couple of years ago in, in Basel. They've just got it in them. And that's what really annoys their rival Betis fans. And that's what United have got to break. I do think United have got t- technically superior footballers. But United have looked a little bit tired in recent weeks. They need to turn it on. If they start against Sevilla like they started against Copenhagen, and I thought they were pretty sloppy for the first 25 before coming good in the second half, I think they're far more likely to get punished. Yeah, Wes Macy, what are you expecting? You know, a lot of the times the defence have, have held out, but at this stage, like Andy said, you, you, you have to start really well. Uh, I mean, Andy, what do you think? I think we still have to start with the strongest team. Um, with Matic in there, um, and probably Lindelof. But I don't know what you think. Would you would you start with that? I, I would, Wes. And I think United have absolutely got to try and win this competition. If it's the first trophy for Oli Gunnar, it's a massive trophy. It's a European trophy. Yeah. Not it's not it's not the um, Champions League. It's a massive trophy. <laughs> UEFA Cup, oh. and it'll give them so much confidence if they can win it. And you've come this far, you might as well go for it. It was worth winning in 2017, but Jose got it spot on against Ajax in the final. And everyone had a great time. It's a shame that people can't come over and have a great time. But if you can beat Sevilla and then beat Inter or Donetsk in the final, then you're starting to think there's a team coming together here. Because at the moment, if I think Man United played by uh, Munich, I don't think they're at that level. Yeah. So show what level we're at. The Europa no. League's been really good. I'm looking at you, Ben. Here, what's going at on, your Ben? Face. What is you've got? Go back to Ben. He's more interesting than me. What is going on, the on here, Ben? The coppers have turned up to move Beardo on. <laughs> <laughs> press mute, Ben. Yeah, you better hey. press mute. God, sorry, Andy. Keep going, mate. I'd rather watch Ben there. So yeah. I, I think you've got to go for it. You've got to win it, and. You know, it's only January where people were doubting Ollie a little bit. And I think he's been brilliant since. I yes. think United's patience in him is really good because that's the last thing that Real Madrid were with Lopetegui. And I can see a lot of positives coming together. I think the Europa League's been better after United this season, not financially, but for players like Mason Greenwood, Brandon Williams, they wouldn't have started as much in, in the Champions League. But it's Man United. They're one of the three biggest teams in the world. Or the biggest, if you ask Sevilla's manager. They've got to start. Should, we, should be in the, we should be in Lisbon now. Yeah. 
in the final stages. Yeah. But win this, win a trophy. Uh, I was really disappointed at the performance against Chelsea. But Manchester United since January, there's been a lot of good stuff about that. And as Wes says, I think Matic has been, I wouldn't say a surprise, but he's turned his season around massively. He never gives yeah. the ball away. Great to see you, mate. Thank you so much for coming on. I hope to catch up with you over at some point. Take care, mate. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Andy. Hey, mate. Andy. See you, mate. Andy Mitten joining us on the group chat. Before, uh, before we go back and check in with Ben and the police and the authorities, um, just a reminder, United obviously been training at the home of the third division side, Victoria Cologne. Training session last night, I caught up with um, United's first team coach, Mike Feeler. We've enjoyed the, f the first part of it. Now we're going into the serious stuff with the semi-final and, uh, and hopefully we stay here for the, for the long haul. But everybody's settled in pretty quickly. One thing that's been a little bit different to back home has been the, the heat and the humidity. But I think from the game we had on Sunday, I think the boys will benefit from training in this, in this climate for five or six days. And, and here we are, it's a, obviously a third division club. It's, it's not the Aon training complex, but the facilities oh, are still nice. good enough, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we were surprised, you know, we got our, our sort of documentation as to where we would be based, uh, what to expect, and we were a little bit, you know, unsure as to, as to how good the quality would be, how good the quality of the surface would be. Uh, and we found that this is uh, extremely good, and we're really pleased to, uh, to use this facility. Training, obviously, every day. How important are training performances when you go towards selecting, obviously, the lineups for the games? How, how, how important are they? Yeah, they're very important. You know, they're very important sort of to make sure the team gels well together, the squad gels well together, that they have fun, that they enjoy what they're doing, but also to get a feel of the tactical element because we know who our opponents are. So we can, uh, we can work because we've got the time in between the games. So each day is relevant towards uh, the semi-final now, and we're we're picking that up starting from today. Quite rare, isn't it, to actually have a bit of time to to work on that sort of thing? Yeah, it has a it has a little feel of a pre-season in a way. You know, where you come in, you're experimenting a little bit, but we are at the back end of the season. You know, albeit that seems strange in itself when we're talking about September. But we're here to do what we have to do, and that is hopefully to qualify for the final and then take it one step further and, and, and go beyond the semis that we seem to have got to uh, this season. Quite a few youngsters are here in the squad as well. I was just wondering, how, how big is this experience for them? Well, it's invaluable. I mean, they can't, uh, they can't replicate this back at, at Carrington. They're, you know, they're with this group, they're with a successful group, and it's there for them to impress us, not only on the training ground, but also in and around the hotel and, 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 and show us the qualities and personalities. So, yeah, we're really pleased to have them with us. And they've all, all of them, have, uh, have joined in really well with the group. And just viewing from afar, it seems like the spirit amongst the lads is, is fantastic. In your experience, you know, throughout the years, and you look at this group and the spirit of this group, what yeah. do you make of it? No, I think it's, it's getting there, you know. We've, we've worked a lot, and Ollie, the manager, the coaches, the staff, you know, in the background, really, you don't get that much recognition. We've all started to gel well together. Everybody now understands what we expect how we go about our work and our play. And, and I think, as you can tell, you know, they communicate well with each other. There's no superstars at the moment. Uh, but, uh, but no, they're a good group, a good group. And it's a real tie, isn't it, United Sevilla? That's a proper European yeah, it tie, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it does yeah. sound European. We know how, how uh, Sevilla operate. They're a very good outfit, very good technical players, great possession of the ball. Uh, they showed that against Wolves in, in their last game. But they are a, a team to be reckoned with, both in their own domestic league and in Europe, and particularly this cup. You know, they have some history of this cup. So I think it's two football teams going head to head in, a, in what could be a really good semi final. I think that would be the 61st game of this season, but you're ready for, ready for a couple be. more? It should be, yeah. You've got to be lucky in every season at 60 plus games. If you have done that, you've had a reasonable success because you've been in every competition. Obviously, at the end of it, you want to come up, you don't want to come up short. But I think if we'd have said at the start of the season we'd have played 60 odd games, we'd have been more than happy with that. So we're really, we're really in a good place um, and there's still a lot to play for. Mike Feeling speaking at training yesterday, thought it was interesting, he, he, he was saying there, there are no superstars in this squad. He's basically saying that squad harmony is getting there. He said 
the, the club and the, and the players are starting to gel well and they fully understanding what the club expects. Do you guys see that as important that there isn't anybody who's above anybody else? There are no superstars involved. Is that, how important is that, that sort of culture where everyone's at the same level? Dan? I think that's something we, <clears throat> we highlighted that um, when Ollie came in that, you know, he'd, he'd want to, he'd want to change, you know, you can't have a hierarchy. Of course you get your opinion leaders in the dressing room and your stronger characters, but everybody's got to be pulling in the same direction. And, you know, he's, he's sorted the club out from the inside out, as opposed to bringing in superstars, the dressing room's important. Um, and you can see that on the pitch, lads, lads are putting the foot in for each other, doing the hard yards for each other. And um, that's what Man United's built on, you know, helping out your teammate. Yeah, he was also saying a lot of the young players have impressed, not just on the pitch, but around the sort of facilities, the hotel, whatever, the training ground, with their personalities, with their, their, their characters. A trip like this, Wes, how big is it for young players to play in a kind of little mini tournament like this with a European trophy at the end of it? Yeah, it's brilliant. And... You know, the young players, they've all, they, they would have all been there for many, many years now. Um, you know, they'll, they'll know how to conduct themselves. They're, they're, they would have been watching for a while um, how the older lads um, and the, the team, the first team squad conduct themselves. And, you know, that they know what's expected. And, I mean, they're, they're just be enjoying it, Stu, I think. Um, I mean, what a, what a tournament to be in. Um, you know, and at the end of it, you can win a trophy, so... You know, they, they know they're doing okay. They, they still want to get better. And I think it, it's brilliant for all the young lads knowing that Ollie at any point could bring any one of them in. And that's the ones that have not travelled. Yeah. Mick also saying, Maisie, that I mentioned to him that we've played 60 games this season. And he's kind of shrugging his shoulders saying, well, that's what we should be doing. We should be playing 60 games. We should be going deep in all these competitions rather than complaining about the fixtures and fixture congestion. He wants us to be playing 60 plus games this season. Absolutely. That, that's, what, that's what it's all about. You know that if you play 60 games, you're there or thereabouts winning trophies and that's what Manchester United's all about. Um, and the fact that the young kids are there, maybe not in order of the first team, but they learn so much more when you're with them, you know, how they conduct themselves on and off the pitch, what they're like in training. But they'll have learned that from, the, you know, coming up through the youth. They know what Manchester United's all about and now how important it is to, you know, be respectful around the club, um, respect the badge and, and, and learn of the, the senior pros, Juan Mata and uh, Matic, David De Gea, yeah. um, them type of players, to learn so much more of them being in and around them. And that, that can only be good for the future for, for the club. This is the last time we're, we're going to speak before the weekend, guys, uh, the, the game. What's your gut instinct about what's going to happen? Let's go around. Danny, what's going to happen? United, Sevilla. I think it's going to be a, a tough one. I really do. Um, I think I, I said that we'd win it 2-1, but it would be a 10-2-1 and um, a little bit of drama in it. So that, that's my prediction. I think we'll scrape it. I do. Wes, scrape it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, if we, if we start well and continue doing that throughout the game, I think we'll be absolutely fine, and I do. It's just if we don't and if we have a few bad patches or we start bad, you know, we're going to have to proper dig in um, to, to get a result. I mean, I think we will do that anyway, but I just want us to start really well. Yeah. Maisie, you think we'll get there? Uh, yes. United on penalties. <laughs> and Ben? I don't want that. No. I think my heart might, well, Stuart's heart will definitely give out. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it'll be that, it'll, it'll be that tight, it'll be that, that edgy that nobody wants to lose and that's when it becomes a little bit stalemate and yeah. it gets to a certain point in the game where somebody has to risk whether, whether they do it, whether we do it, take the game to them, but I think it'll, I think it'll certainly go into extra time. Yeah. All right, we'll find out, will we, with the game on Sunday here in Cologne. We'll be back at some point next week to uh, reflect on, hopefully, United continuing to stay in Cologne and preparing for a final. But a big job to do before we can say that. Boys, don't worry about asking me, Stuart. Don't worry about it, it's fine.
I did ask you, and you I asked you, I asked you, and you just said, oh, he said, he said extra time. We're not interested in you. Yeah, we're not interested. Get a word in it. You might get more sense out of the fellow lying on the ground next to you. What is he? <laughs> He's gone now. <laughs> so just for the record, then, what is going to happen? Extra time, by any chance? Or I see that, lads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm half inclined to agree with what Wes said, is that yeah. if we can find some of the form that we found at the start of, of this, this restart, I think we could blow Sevilla away in the first half hour, and uh, and that would make for a, a, a much more comfortable evening. Um, but that's a, that's a perfect scenario, and they don't always happen in football. But I just feel as though United have, you know, have got another couple of gears to go from what we've already seen. I don't think the performances have been have been quite up to what we saw in the first seven or eight games. And if he can find that again, I think that we can we can comfortably beat Sevilla. Not sure it was worth waiting for, to be honest with you, but thanks very much for that. <laughs> 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 I'm See you not next doing... week, boys. Take care. Yeah, See you in a bit. <laughs>